Good evening to the Brookfield Selectman's meeting of Tuesday, February 6, 2018. Would you like to raise and join me in saluting the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like to entertain um, a motion to approve the minutes from the Brookfield Emergency Squad from January 2018. You have that motion. A second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Announcement. The Adena Archaeology Project presentation public meeting. Eric Johnson, head of the Archaeology Department of UMass, will present the findings and recommendations from what was called the Campground Project at 6.30 p.m. February 13th in the banquet room of the town hall. Snow date is February 20th. This project confirmed the existence of the Adena Connected Culture Living on Quaybog Pond 3,000 years ago, if not longer. Contact Clarence Snyder at 508-637-1377 if you have any questions. Tyler Wolin, District A, to Senator Ann Gobi, will be holding office hours at the Brookfield Town Hall from 2 to 3 p.m. Wednesday, February 21st. All are welcome. Does anyone else have any notes? I should also do the open space, that the open space and rec plan uh, sensing sessions, the final four sessions to uh, go through the output of the earlier meetings. We'll begin with the seniors meeting on February, good, that's 13th. Uh, in the morning at uh, the church, the Congregational Church, where we'll go through uh, four, over, uh, four meetings. We'll go over each of the same material four times to make sure everyone understands what, what was said, what was learned, such that we can move forward with the open space okay. rewrite. Okay, good. Beth, do you have anything? No. <clears throat> All right. We'll, now we'll move on to our public access portion of the meeting. Well, after public access, I have one alibi. I have one additional Before? Item. Uh, real quick. You can, yeah, go ahead. If that's all right. We do have a, a good solid draft of the um, uh, charge for a memorial committee to reestablish the memorial mm -hmm. committee, but we're still looking for volunteers, so I just wanted to kind of put out there that if anybody's interested at looking at, at participating in uh, developing the, the plan and trying to figure out how we might um, honor folks that have served in the post-Vietnam era, because that's as far as people are represented, at least physically on our green, um, that they should contact Karen in the Selectman's office to join that committee. So. Fine, thank you. All right, Mr. Holcraft. <clears throat> I don't want to be critical, but I'm going to be a little critical tonight. <clears throat> You did a review with our treasurer last selectman's meeting, correct? Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be a review. It was a review. Nobody <laughs> else you want to call it. It was supposed to be a review of how she was doing in her performance. You were five months five months in the running and giving her the the review. And when you talked to her, you never you you three never voted or said anything of how she did in her review. You mostly talked about what was going on in the treasurer's office, but you actually never did give her a review of what her good points were or what you wanted her to improve on. You, you, never, you never even made any decision on that. Could you tell me why? I think you missed the meeting. We were there, we gave her. Yeah, but it, was, it wasn't a review, you were supposed to give her a review for her. It was a review. We asked her what her goals <clears throat> were for the year. And you, no. For the yes, we did, David. It was right. You asked her a couple of things, we, but you we, still didn't. You did not give her a review and say, hey, what, what you wanted or what you didn't want, and you didn't you give her an evaluation. Come. You didn't come across and give her an evaluation. Ken? So. I have her on the <clears throat> before. I've been in the seat here three times. Uh, time. Excuse me. This is, I'm doing no, my public no, he, access. He can ask, but he, he's just. Making a comment, Dave, he's allowed to do that. Mr. Cleveland? Okay. I have heard the contact, and I've contacted her three times, and asked her if there's any problems that come to the meeting, and she hasn't made any mistakes lately, so um, she's very happy with the job. 
No, she, she, she's learning very well, and this is what we're told by the Now, that's, staff. you're missing my point, Linda. You were supposed to give her a review, and you did not do it. So that's, that's one, one why you didn't give her a review. It was five months late as it was. Well, we had explained to you that day the reason the holidays came around. It was around Thanksgiving, and it, <clears throat> it was around Thanksgiving, and then no. Christmas came quick, and so then we decided to do it um, when we did. You guys are up on policies and procedures all the time and bylaws, and you don't even follow them yourself. Three months means three months, Linda. So do I get an answer why you didn't give her an actual review? Madam Chair. <clears throat> No. no, I'm going to no. go to the chair, say, Madam Chairman, we, this board, met in a meeting where we reviewed the progress of the treasurer, and uh, to suggest that we did otherwise uh, is incorrect, and so therefore I think uh, the discussion has ended. Yeah. Okay, so so okay, so you didn't you just discuss the treasurer's department, but you didn't actually give her a review. I would. We gave her a review. I don't know what else you would call it. At the, Wait, he, said, he said, she said. It that, that's no, 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 that's not what I'm saying. That's okay. It, All right, I made my point. Same old, same old, you, you know, you, you, if you want to be leaders and managers, do it. But don't, you know, don't just try to brush it off, Clarence, like you're doing everything else in this town. Okay. So, okay. All right, thank you. Madam Chairman, <clears throat> since that topic came up, I would suggest that this board uh, and you specifically routinely were in contact with the treasurer's office through a number of the months of her coming on board and at no time did you feel that we had some an issue, we had good guidance from Ken yes. and that uh, she was progressing well so that there was no need for an immediate action on our part and that uh, we had a very successful meeting the other day and I would think it, think it uh, contrary to uh, to the individual involved, that we did not do our job. I agree. We, we did. I <coughs> stop in. I stop in many days when I'm up here, and Keith and uh, Mr. Arsenault and uh, the treasurer in there. And uh, I, I always ask for the progress, how things are going, and he always tells me, you know, her strengths and weaknesses. And he says she's doing very well in the position. Mm -hmm. And uh, and, per and perhaps, Madam Chair, some of the conversation was, was a little subtle for the audience, but there was a lot of communication regarding training yeah. levels, yes. particular processes and procedures that uh, we did get a status on to a certain extent, or at least a, a uh, timeline or goal for when some of them that haven't occurred yet can be completed, given that the, the office that both those individuals walked into had uh, in essence, uh, been vacant yeah, for several months. Vacant for several months. So uh, perhaps it wasn't necessarily uh, clear enough if we were doing it for an audience, but for the purposes of actually communicating with the individual doing the job, uh, the information is there. So um, I know I do still owe because I still haven't drafted up my notes from that. Um, I'll be forwarding those to Karen, like we said at the meeting. So. And I'm satisfied with what she's doing. She's doing excellent as far as I'm concerned. And I don't think that there's really any other need for discussion on that. I'll just continue to, you know, monitor her and check in, and I'll get back to the rest of the board and how things are going. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, why don't we take things out of order because we have our hearing at 7 p.m. with the CBDG application. Okay. Our next one here on the agenda is a resignation. Maybe. Hmm? Yeah, maybe. Right here. Uh, this is for um, the resignation from uh, Janet Siri, who has resigned from the Brookfield Cultural Council. And you know, it's kind. Of, she, Janet's been on the <coughs> Cultural Council many years, and she's done a fantastic job. And you know, you hate to take see people step down, and take the, the resignate from this resignation. So I'd like to make a motion to uh, you have accept the motion to accept the resignation with regret. Second. And Karen, can, uh, all in favor, aye. aye. Karen, aye. if you can get her out a letter of appreciation. And then um, they would also like to appoint Rosemary Kodowski of 17 West Main, 17 West Brookfield Road as the new member. And you have a motion to that effect. Okay. And I'll second that. Um, any discussion? All in favor, aye. aye. Okay, we have here. Um, Beth can sign this. 
So you need a motion. Yeah, I'll, I'll oh, yeah. this is the yes. Got it. Yeah. The next one is a is a resign as an appointment, and um, this comes from Reddit Clark of 42 Allen Road. He would like to be please consider me for the appointment to the Capital Improvement Committee as the liaison to the advisory board. And uh, Kermit Eaton um, also requested to, and he agrees with it. And so I'd like a, a motion to, uh, to appoint. appoint Mr. Long Farr. Clark. You have that motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Now we'll have, we're going to go on to, uh, we have special use permits. And we have one for a South Pond, we'll take them all together and vote on them all together. We have one for South Pond for the Mass Bass Alliance, and that one is 41418. Then we have another bass fishing for, um, what's the name? It just says bass fishing, and the name of the person that submitted this is named as Mike Gassell. And uh, this is for, didn't he? Oh, this is the same. I'm sorry. I'm same. sorry. That's the same one. I'm sorry. Okay. The next one is for 51918. It's for South Pond for the Mass Bath Alliance. The same one. And then this one is also for 82618 for Koi Bug Pond for the Mass Bath Alliance. Okay. Just those. That's a motion. Um, so motion to, for the, to, to approve the permit, fishing for permit. For Second the that. To assign them. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So a question. Karen, do we have a, an ability to extract the numbers of permits that we have issued? Yeah, and we already did that once, correct? All right, so right. what We've was had the had about a dozen since. And so what was that number just so? Um, I don't know. I, I was, don't know about the top it's so easy. I have it on the spreadsheet, so I can give you a count. Yeah. You want. Well, I'm just thinking for the open space and rec yeah, plan okay. that we ought to document that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. And you know the vehicles. Yeah. I think that would be good information. I have something under other today. Um, I received a letter when I was here this morning from the treasurer's office. And that was concerning, um, they, the, they notified, they want us to be notified that they did an internal review regarding the recent retirement account issue that came before the board. Uh, and it was decided that the party who had the issue must deal directly with the investment company. And uh, they would like us to, a uh, motion from us, you know, to, that we we uh, concur. we concur with them that, that that's what it is, and you can just read the letter that came from the, because we had discussed this before, and we all agree that that's what it is. It's really up to the person to uh, work with the carrier. to work to work with the uh, with the department themselves. That's not current. That's just there. I'm going to talk to her about that. You're going to talk to her? It doesn't have to be right now. Okay. That's just under. Does she want to buy? You can ask her if she found some. I haven't checked. So I think my only concern with the letter is that it's it's not that I, it it appears that the uh, concern was that the treasurer's office um, felt that there was some sort of indication of fault within the treasurer's office, uh, or that the 
employee was under the impression that it was that it was uh, at the, that the treasurer's office was at fault when the primary um, concern here was related to the the accuracy of the of the mailing of the information. So. Um, I mean, that is a letter to us. They're not, they didn't send that on to them. Right, I understand that. They just wanted our support behind that. that you know, we agreed to. Because they'll come back to us if they're yeah. unsatisfied. Yeah, I know. Right. If they're not happy, they will come back to us. Right. So. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, the town got the money to the to the place it needed to get to, and the primary issue is that Great West didn't get it to where it needs to go from there, in essence. The carrier. So. So we have a motion the treasurer to work with the affected party. Yeah. Okay. Aye. 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 Yeah, we have another here, one uh, last minute. Um, I, I would oh. like to just add one thing to that, though. I mean, I support that overall, but if the treasurer's office has uh, any information that could be of use to the to the employee, then I would ask that they include that in whatever communication oh, that they well, have. Yeah. They, well, um, she already, I think the employee had already texted her. I mean, she emailed her this week. Okay, I'm just I'm just saying is if, if in the process of doing that review is if as a courtesy they can include yeah oh sure know. they will they said they would they just wanted our support on this letter that's all that they were asking okay uh, and another question Mrs Clancy have you found a volunteer yet for your elder bus Karen's got a note here hmm? you don't speak loud enough oh I'm sorry okay <laughs> question okay all right. We had a note here asking if Mrs. Clancy has found a volunteer yet. Are you still searching? Elder bus. But the, the elder, elder bus. bus. Oh, the elder bus. That was a while back. Yeah. Did, you, did anyone ever step on to the plate for that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. It, was about, it was about a that year ago, I think. That is handled through West Coast. Okay. Um, okay. And see if anyone else can be updated. The Medicare will get people to the dog oh, okay. and okay. wait for them to turn them home. Okay. Very I, reasonable. I believe that that organization is if we wanted to to have a seat at the board in order well, to get. Well, if you want to go shopping or do something like that, but they don't wait for them, they tell you here and they'll be there. But the Medicare picks them up and takes them and waits for the doctors or the drugstore for them. And, for, and the prices are very reasonable, and we kick in as well as our branch kicks into that. And Westbrook Field organizes it. Does well, anyone else have anything to bring up on the other? We're going to wait for 12 minutes. So what we're going to recess for 12 minutes. Maybe what we can do maybe is, you know, adjourn until 7 o'clock and recess. So a motion to adjourn until 7 o'clock. Second that. Aye. Say it if you'd like or not. Reopening, oh, I'd like to motion to reopen meeting at you have a motion 7 p.m. You have a motion to reopen at 7 a.m. 7 a.m. 7 p.m. Did you sign away? Uh, I did. All right. Thank you. 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 We're reopening our meeting because we are having a public hearing tonight. February 6, 2018. And what it is, it's, a, it's for FY 2018 Town of Brookfield CBG application. The Town the Brookfield Board of Selectmen will conduct a public hearing on February 6, 2018 at 7 p.m. at the Brookfield Town Hall, 6 Central Street in the Banquet Room. The public is encouraged to attend this hearing to discuss the town's FY 2018 application
to the Massachusetts Department of Housing and Community Development for up to $800,000 in community development block grant funds. Should the meeting be canceled, well, it's not. I won't read that part. The town of Brookfield is seeking input on potential grant-funded projects, potential projects under development for the application currently include, one, a housing re re rehabilitation program, two, construction of drainage, water, and pavement improvements in the Hayden Avenue and Hyde Street neighborhoods. <coughs> These projects were identified as priorities that are consistent with Brookfield's community development strategy. All persons with questions or comments regarding the grant application will have an opportunity to be here, heard. These, those unable to attend may send written comments to the Brookfield Board of Selectmen, <coughs> 6 Central Street, Brookfield, Mass. If awarded, the Central Massachusetts Planning Commission will assist the town with grant implementation and administration. The banquet room and town hall is hand handicap accessible. Persons who require special accommodations to attend the meeting should contact the selectman's office at least two business days prior to hearing for information. You can contact Andrew Lowe, Brookfield Board of Selectmen, January 26, 2018. And now I will turn uh, the hearing over to Mr. Andrew Lowe. Thank you. Um, so uh, my name is Andrew Lowe. I'm here from the Central Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission with my colleague, uh, Connor Robichaud. And tonight we're here, uh, as the statement uh, said, to talk about the town's FY18 CDVG application. Um, if for folks who are here in the audience, uh, there is a handout that's essentially an outline of what I'll be presenting that's available in the front here. And we do ask that folks uh, sign into one of the two uh, sign-in sheets that are going around the room if you haven't done so already. Um, so the purpose of the hearing tonight is twofold. The first is to present and allow discussion of the town's FY18 CDBG application, and the second is to request at the conclusion of the hearing that the, uh, the Board of Selectmen vote to authorize the application um, uh, to be made by the Planning Commission on the town's behalf. So to give folks a little bit of background, if, if, um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the, with the program, um, CDBG is a federally funded grant program that's been around since the early 1970s. Larger communities get this money directly from the federal government each year on a non-competitive basis. For uh, smaller communities, uh, money is, is given from the federal government to the state government who operates a competition uh, for the small communities each year. So uh, under the current rules, towns are limited to $800,000 per year or a maximum of $1.35 million over two years. So this is a competitive grant program. There's, there's no guarantee that the application will be awarded. Um, I will say that Brookfield has had a, a pretty fair degree of success in this program over the last 20 years or so. It's been part of about eight or nine different grants under this program, either on its own or as part of regional grants uh, awarded to other neighboring towns. So uh, what are the, the projects in the application this year? Well, this year uh, we have two projects to, that are uh, ready to apply for. So the, the first one I'll discuss is the Hayden Hyde Improvement Project. So that's uh, a project to construct drainage, water, sidewalk, and roadway improvements in a residential area that has recurrent flooding and other infrastructure problems. It also includes engineering oversight of the construction work. And that project is a continuation of a project that's uh, currently seeing its design wrapped up right now under the town's last block grant. Um, and the preliminary estimate we have at this point is for about $539,000. Um, for that project, and we should have a, a more final cost estimate within about 10 days for that. Um, the other project in this year's grant is the housing rehab program. Again, this is one that the town has had in the past, uh, most recently through a grant that uh, was to Warren in, in collaboration with Brookfield. Um, and that program would provide assistance to eligible low to moderate income homeowners and investor owners of affordable housing to make code mandating repairs and other home improvements. Uh, right now it looks like we can budget about six units of assistance um, for that and that the overall budget would be about 170,000. Um, grant administration would be about 90,000 and the total grant would be right up at the $800,000 limit uh, that the town can apply for. So, so how did we arrive at these particular projects for this year's application? 
um, the Community Development Block Grant Advisory Committee, of whom I see several members in the audience here, so thank you for coming. Um, it held, I, I believe we had five meetings that touched on this year's application over the last three or four months. Um, talked about a number of different project possibilities and, and voted to prioritize the ones that we're um, looking at for this year's application. Uh, other outreach included the Community Development Strategy Forum that was held here about a month ago. Um, we've had letters and surveys that were part of these projects uh, in the earlier phases last year. Um, we, we held a public event for Hayden and Hyde area project area residents. We've had uh, um, social media and website posts. We've had media coverage, and we're here tonight at the public hearing. Um, so this application is due on March the 2nd, and um, generally speaking, the awards are announced in July or August each mm -hmm. year. There is a little bit of uncertainty with the federal budget for this program, so that may uh, delay the, the timeline a little bit, but we still expect sometime over the summer to hear about the results. So. At this point, I'm happy to take any questions or comments from either the board or from the audience. <coughs> when can we start? <laughs> <laughs> we hope we can start in July. <laughs> any other questions? So, uh, uh, while we have yeah. just a moment. So, Andrew, any, anything else in, in your meetings that, uh, that as far as next up, up kind of projects or anything of that nature that we should be aware of? Yeah, we, there was one other project that we looked at, um, which would be to design some infrastructure improvements over in the Green Street area, which has had some drainage and, and I believe water issues uh, as well. We, we developed that project uh, fairly far along and we couldn't make the income survey that we have to do work. We do, didn't quite get the response rate we needed, but we intend to, to try to complete that survey uh, over the next few months so that it could be applied for in a future application. So it would be a, a future 800,000 application or? Um, it, yeah, I mean, it, it depends on, on what the award is. So if the town were to be awarded 800,000 for this 2018 grant, you'd be capped at 550,000 in the subsequent one. So it's, um, you know, it, we try to stagger things so that you're applying for the smaller budget projects in the years when you're capped at a smaller budget. So things like design and planning, uh, so last year's grant was under 400000 and that was all design and planning. And this year's grant is larger, um, and obviously the intent here is to, to construct one of the projects that was designed last year. So maybe the important thing, because the camera's running, is that we're, we're unable to really evaluate that project properly at, in the timing that you, you would have needed. So, so that it's really important that the residents of these areas, when we're asking for this kind of data, that the data is important because it puts us in line for free money. Absolutely, yeah. We, we can't do most of these projects without support from the residents of, of whatever the project area is. You know, if, if we do send out a survey, we do ask that folks uh, respond to it um, because, again, most of these projects have to be surveyed for uh, generally for, for the approximate household income of the residents because this all these projects are are intended to help people who are from middle income yep. down. Yeah. And we, we, you know, if we don't get a high enough response rate, we can't do the projects. So right. it's, uh, it's and simple if as that. the town were to have to do the work, it would then come yes, out absolutely. of the tax this dollars. Is, and, it's and it's and still your about, tax money, but it's you're yeah. sharing it with everyone in the country yeah. instead of uh, just here in town. Yeah, in your pocket. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Andrew, maybe you could lighten them on actually vacant houses actually hurts. Yes, uh, what Bruce is uh, touching on is that vacant homes in these project areas are under the state's rules counted as uh, over income folks. So that makes it even more important that, that folks in neighborhoods respond to the surveys because um, you know, some of these neighborhoods have a few vacancies and it, it really makes the math more difficult for us to try to get the surveys complete. Okay, well, so, so help me understand that. if. You've got a house that's been abandoned for years. It's in an area that's, in essence, you're trying to mitigate blight. Yet, you can't even like if you have substantiation documentation. Can you submit that in lieu of the resident's like no. response? No, I've had this discussion with the, the State Department of Housing and Community Development. Uh, you did mention the term blight. There are other ways to potentially approach projects through what they used to call slum and blight designation. Um, 
but that that's a whole different process and it has different projects that are eligible under it okay. so you know it's it's kind of a balancing act as to how we you know try to approach the projects that the town is, has asked us to look into um, and it for the most part it, we have we are stuck with uh, doing income based projects okay is there any Want to call it supportive homework that the town can do to try and um, like do you have a, a list of addresses or what have you that was part of that Green Street project that I mean what's the process to follow up with the folks that didn't get you in? Well I, I will say that there there was a good degree of support already from the water department and, and others who helped me okay. um, to do the survey there so um, you know we I certainly am happy to work with the advisory committee uh, and, and others in, in perhaps yeah, area yeah. residents to try to finish the survey. It was very close. It was, you know, a couple of houses more had they responded, we would have been able to mm -hmm. uh, right. do the project depending on where their income came in. Um, Got it. So then, because of the conversation that you're having on the blight uh, or, or abandoned housing or whatever, mm -hmm. is it important that we maybe prioritize those areas or projects that we might want to go after so that we get smart to make sure that those houses aren't there when you finally have to do the survey. Yeah, it, it's, it's, as I said, it's, it's kind of tricky because the two national objectives, that's what HUD, essentially, it's the prerequisites for doing any projects under this grant program. There are three of them. One is to serve people who are predominantly low to moderate in income. Uh, the other is to prevent or eliminate blight. Uh, there is a third one, which is to address uh, emergency, urgent need, which is almost never allowed. Um, and the trick is that different kinds of activities are eligible under the two different national objectives that we use. So to do something that's predominantly a, a subsurface pro infrastructure product, so you're looking at water, you're looking at drainage, you can't use slum and blight national objective right. for that right. most of the yeah. time. So that's why, in the particular case of Green Street, we were looking at an income-based project because we, you know, the, the need for that project was really for the drainage and, and as well as the water. So I, I'm happy to explore potential uh, slum and blight survey. And again, it's, it's it, an archaic it term it, that we don't yeah, like to use yeah, much, but it, I was just that's looking at it from the legal term. Is yeah. that a vacant house would oh. seem to imply that there is no income there, yet it gets counted yeah, it, the no, opposite right. direction? Absolutely. It's a little confusing. Wow. Right. If we put together a list of homes that qualify for slum and blight, then we pass those off to Andrew. That could be an application in the future. If you sure, and you know, I don't want to get too far into the weeds here. There are right. different kinds of slum and blight as well. So, but we have, but, we do have, yeah, uh, vacant, abandoned, half burnt out houses, things like that. Mm -hmm. that uh, I'm speaking out too, but they'll never be rebuilt. Yeah. They need to be removed. We'll do it. We did try to get in a program with the Attorney General's mm -hmm. office, but that last summer. Yeah, but it was voted against. I know that, and the Board of Health didn't want to get involved with it. I don't know if we could try again. Well, I think that, that, that where I was headed with my questioning with Andrew was yeah. to, in fact, circle back around to that. If there were priority areas that we should worry about, we should be worried about them. The, the good news is, as I understand it from the town's attorney, we now have those first three that we applied for back yes. in September to the courts to actually be able to take them down. Yep. And, and uh, in January, we were allowed to, and in early February now, I think the 10th of February, the third one would go before the courts so that we would have a sign off. Yep. But unfortunately, with that, that's a very good example of where the town is going to spend $9,000 of the town's money that, to take them down. Mm -hmm. and, and again, it's if we can hook up one of these programs where we understand your priorities as far as where we can go, we have that, and then possibly we could find some grant monies to be able to take those buildings down so it wouldn't necessarily be the town's money. And I do know that the advisory committee did include uh, looking at some of those properties in this community development strategy that was approved uh, last month. So. It, it's definitely on the list of things to look at. Unfortunately, it's a long process. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you don't get there overnight and you don't fix it overnight. But you we don't do anything within a year. Yeah. That's no. as early as it can happen. Yeah. But and we chip away at it. That's all we can do. And it would make, you know, if we could do something, it would make those neighborhoods more desirable for people that want to move into the community. Absolutely. So does the members of the um, uh, community development Block grant advisory committee have 
the information around what we do have on the Green Street project? No, I know it's not part of this. That information I consider to be kind of private. Mm -hmm. No, I don't mean the financial in information. I just mean the general project plan, like what we think we need to do. That's that's all I'm yeah. asking about. Just to get a better concept of, of what's potentially on the table for next year or the year after, if mm -hmm. we want to go after it. No, we as a community don't look at the surveys, don't study the surveys. No. Not, well, you know, no, and that wasn't what I was asking. No, I was no, asking I, about I, the I, project. We keep that in a confidential file at the point. Yeah. yeah. And some people, some people are afraid to fill out that survey because they feel that their information of what they make for a household is private. Yep. Yeah. But I had to go door to door on a couple of them before and actually after hours and physically explain things to them and say, nobody's going to see this except for the state to just approve this project. And that's all it is. Right. And you actually don't break down your income. No. Do you fit between a range or how? Here and here. How you live in. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's you a know, big range. There's a checkbox. You know, are, how many people are in your household? Two is your income between, you know. 30,000 and 60,000. Right. So it's, it's, it's a big range on it. So it's, once I explained that to some of the people, they were more to sign the paperwork and check yeah. off the box. Yeah, and, and plus probably I think one of the things that I, I was trying to reach for is that perhaps if we did a, figured out a better way to support you all in communicating, hey, the survey is coming to the house. If you live on one of these streets, it's not some telemarketer trying to get your personal information or whatever. It's from the town. Sort well, of that's, thing. that's from, why it's a lot better for town employees to actually go knock on doors and stuff yeah. and try to get them to the do it. That way they see the town truck there and everything else, and they're not going to be afraid to open up the door. Or if you get a, a, a resident involved. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Somebody that's that often can, the most that, successful. That we can, that we yeah. can just... You know, put in front of people to understand that no, if if you see Ken at your door, the reason why Ken's at your door is because you know he's the guy that's trying to get this information yeah, so we can go after the money. So we tried to knock on the door at the house. He they just you can hear him talking inside up in the corner. Yeah. 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 No, even, yeah, no, even if you could get somebody from, from the, the neighborhood, neighborhood itself yeah. to go down there and do what they yeah, need that can be very effective. Yeah, so so just as a you know just just as a conversation yeah. point, so that we know what we're doing in the future to get better at it. That's all. So. So, Madam Chair, what motion do you make? Okay, we we have a motion. Uh, would we like to support and approve the submission of the? Fiscal 18 CDBG grant application, the activities as presented today, with allowance of minor budget or program adjustments, and furthermore, to authorize the chair and the CFO to sign all documents required for the application. You have that motion. I'll second. Any discussion at all? All Great in chair. favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. These are good projects. Not that you guys can already know that. Good project. <laughs> Thank you. Do we have any questions? Then I would say motion to adjourn at 721. <laughs>